I'm Daksha Patel and I'm an artist who often works with our universities responding to their research whether it's research into life science or mathematics or in this case language. I'm Simon, Simon Coffey. I'm Programme Director of the PTC here at King's College and uh, this project we're doing here with Daksha is uh, for the secondary PTC Modern Languages. Our goal in a way was to encourage the students who are teachers now in secondary schools to think of language and language teaching a little bit more creatively. So over the next two sessions we are going to be exploring whether there's an aesthetic element to language. So I developed the workshops in response to Simon's research into the aesthetic element of language and they're basically a series of different activities, creative and very interactive playful activities uh, where I get students to move around the space. They're quite embodied, so at times they are closing their eyes and touching objects. At other times they are closing their eyes and listening uh, to words in different languages um, and lots and lots of drawing. We're just in a way trying to bring into relief in a way what people already know intuitively about emotionally connecting to languages. In language learning or any other endeavour that you undertake, I think you have to uh, feel your way into it. You have to emotionally invest in it. Whether you can imagine a shape, a form connected to a sound, a sound within a language. That's really what I want students in school to do. I want them to enjoy the sound of the word, not just think they have to learn this word meaning that word, you know, it's a sort of code correspondence, X means Y. I really want people to enjoy the sound of words, to revel in the poetry, if you like, and the, 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 the visual and the auditory aesthetic of language. It's really nice to think about the, the language and the sound um, in a more um, artistic way and for me it makes a lot of sense to, to intertwine all the um, activities and subjects as well because you see the topic uh, from another angle, I would say. What I would like you to do in these drawings is reflect upon how your names change depending on context and how they reflect your cultural identities. I really enjoyed um, especially the one about writing our names and that for me was very like personal. It was just really interesting to try and like get my ideas out there. Purple is my favourite colour, all shades really. Um, the red bricks for Manchester, I went to uni there. Because I feel like it would just um, help everybody just find out a bit more about each other and just know how different cultures are not the same, there's different things about everybody. And just that whole diversity aspect within the lesson, I feel like that would just really, you know, bring the whole experience to be really good in the classroom. And the H is kind of happiness or laughter. I did stand-up comedy, so that's you know, writing and the microphone, and then orange is kind of symbol of, kind of joy and happiness. That's fantastic, Bruce. <laughs> So I think certainly in universities, traditionally students are often sat behind desks, uh, often looking at a screen. So I purposefully didn't, though there is a screen in this room, I didn't use it. I just held up bits of paper. Um, I got them to use um, uh, pastels, which are quite smudgy. They got their fingers covered in colours. Um, so they were already using their bodies on the tables, but then also built in uh, movement. So they had to move around different uh, seats. They had to walk around the room. They had to stand against the wall and draw around their body shapes. I think when you use your body and you're learning, I think you remember things in different ways. Uh, I think love is all of the body and it's colourful and it's bright and it takes over everything. When we think of language learning often, we think everything that goes on from here in the head and we ignore the rest of the body and how we feel words. 
And one of the wonderful things about this workshop is that we're encouraging uh, trainees not only to think about language in the body, but to actually move. So it's a lot more kinesthetic than we would normally see in a university seminar. I think this, this, even for us who are kind of experts in our language, we still have to really think about the words and how it can make us think when we're working with students who are newer to the language, how we can create an association and it may stay in their minds a bit more. Because we're very emotional beings, I think trying to learn vocabulary through emotion, it will probably imprint it on their mind a lot easier. The words from today, I think, are going to stay with me. All the talk, the emotional language we've used with these drawings. I've thought about it a lot more than I probably have in the last couple of months. An aperitif is not the drink, it's all the things that we do before, that we met before going out. The idea of experiencing language from a personal point of view, like there's this word in Spanish which sounds just encapsulates what I'm trying to say, internalizar, which is internalize the language to make it yours. And I think this can really help and I'm definitely going to try these things out in my classroom because you remember them and you remember the sounds and it's more touchy, I guess, yeah. Languages has always seemed to something that's quite rigorous and hard, you know, um, especially grammar. So making something that's creative, that's involved with languages, I feel like it makes the um, pupils more intrigued and more happy to learn in a sense because they can see that it's used in different ways. It's not just about sitting down, reading a book, doing work for a text, you can actually use your brain and do all these different activities that link it back. Well, usually it's really um, academic in a sense. Um, this is academic, it makes you think, but it makes you explore it. And I think we explored all of these things. We didn't just get taught the things. I never expected to do this on my PGC. And I'm very glad we are, because I love creativity and very rarely get a chance to do this. The most important thing I've seen is that they've enjoyed it, but enjoyment not in a reductive, just having fun but actually not learning anything, enjoyment combined with shifts in mindset, which are gradual and they can't always be quantified or measured, but I can see that they're thinking about language differently and it will stimulate ideas for them to take into their own classroom practice and that's really what it's about.